What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we're showing off one of my favorite decks of all time. It's also one of the very first decks that I picked up when I got back into Yu-Gi-Oh! and that is Blackwing. This deck got a lot of new support in Darkwing Blast and there are ways now to play the deck at a competitive level. Yes, it's a rogue deck, however, this deck can still be built to combat today's metagame. In today's video, we're just going to be doing the deck profile, but tomorrow's video I'm going to be showing off some combos that you need to know for the deck. So make sure you guys are subscribed and you guys like this video because in tomorrow's video we're going to be doing the combos that you need to know on top of that we upload five days a week here on spanko we do all kinds of content deck profiles dual videos combo videos all that good stuff it's right here on the channel so make sure you guys are subscribed for all of that all right with that being said i don't want to take up too much of your time let's get right into the deck profile all right so just before we get into the profile i do want to say that black wings has always been one of my favorite decks and fun fact this was actually one of the first decks that i picked up when i first got back into Yu-Gi-Oh. So I'm really excited to be showcasing the deck profile, especially now that it got new support that actually makes it really cool. However, keep in mind that this deck is still a rogue tier deck, but the build that I'm going to be showing off today is to make it as competitive as possible. So this is a rogue deck. However, I do want to build it to be able to compete with the meta game as much as it possibly can. And so with that being said, let's get right into the deck profile. Of course, we're starting off with three black wings to moon the poison wind. This card is insane. It's your one card combo, or maybe I guess you should say the 1.5 card combo because you need this as well as any other black wing name in your hand so 1.5 card combo but as long as you open this with any black wing you have your combo this card is insane it gets you to your black whirlwind which is really important so that's why you want to be playing three simoon three bora bora is really cool because it's a special summon for you but unlike a lot of the newer names bora is not a once per turn special summon so if you open multiple bora you can special summon multiple bora that's why you're playing the three of these we're playing three of the brand new sujri sujri is a really cool card because it gets you into shamal it also does some other things for you they does like a token effect that can come up here and there However, the main effect is that you can add the Shamal or a card that mentions Blackwing Dragon in its text, which is really, really powerful. And you're always going to be getting extra normal summons through your extra deck here. So that's why this card is really powerful because it gives you that normal summon effect that you want. You're playing the one Zephros. Of course, we all know how good Zephros is. It's pretty much just an extender for the deck. So it's really, really powerful in that sense. Then we're playing three Vada. I do want to explain Vada a little bit because Vada is one of the most important cards and one of the new cards that just came out. So I do want to explain why you're playing three. This card is really good because it does a multiple of things for you so the first thing it lets you do automatically is it just lets you special summon itself if you control another black wing again it is one of the newer black wings which means that unlike bora you can only do this once per turn but it's still perfectly fine you still want to be playing three of it because you really want to see this card as much as you possibly can this card is also of course searchable in the combo but if you just open this card you can search up follow up which is a lot better sometimes so that's why you want to be playing three vada vada also has another really cool effect where during your main phase you can use it as well as non-tuner black wing monsters from your deck so it doesn't have to be from your field from your deck you can send them to the graveyard to synchronize summon a black wing dragon now the total levels have to equal eight of course but it's really cool because you can send stuff like your zephyros from your deck to the grave which now becomes an extender for you so that's why you want to be playing three vada this card is insanely powerful it does lock you into dark monsters from the extra deck however that's not a big problem because all the monsters you're playing in the extra deck are effectively dark monsters so that's why you have to be playing three vada vada is a really powerful card we're playing the one chinook chinook is really powerful because you search it as part of your combo and it's effectively an effect veiler it's a hand trap for you and it's a searchable hand trap which is why you want to be playing the one also you're playing the one Shamal. This card is also really just good at one because you really want to be searching in your combo. It doesn't really do anything on its own. So for that reason, I just like playing the one Shamal. Keep in mind though, with this deck, I do want to mention it if I haven't mentioned it already. You guys can see here that we're not playing any of the level three Blackwing monsters like Gale. And the reason for that is essentially because this deck really wants to go into level sixes, level eights, and level tens. You don't really want to go into the sevens. The sevens aren't as great for you. The sixes, eights, and tens are really, really powerful. That's why you guys can see here a lot of levels that help you get to sixes, eight, and ten. But back to Shamal, we'll play of course the one shamal we're playing the one chris the crack of dawn we're only playing one because again it's a hard once per turn special summon so it's not like if you open multiple chris it does anything for you that's why you're just playing the one we're playing the one oroshi and now this might go against the whole six eight and ten thing however the reason this card is really cool is because when you have an eight on your side of the field you can special summon an oroshi and then you can get to your hot red dragon archfiend which is an omni negate essentially for you this card is insanely powerful that's why you have to be playing the one oroshi we're also playing the one oster this card has multiple reasons why you're playing it it's really good for follow up especially because you're going to be banishing cards with your effects like samoon for example that's why this card is a really good follow up it also puts a black feather counters on the board which can come up because you guys are going to see one of the other new cards can actually protect your monsters with black feather counters so that's why you want to be playing this but essentially it does have a variety of different effects that you can use it's also a level four tuner which is really nice then we're playing the one harmaten 
Mind is really powerful because it's a level two. It also gives you some level modulation, which is really nice. But the reason her mind is really cool is because Vada doesn't have to send one. It can send one or more, which means you can send the Harmontan plus a Zephyros, which equals level eight. And then once you get to level eight, you get to a Blackwing. But now you have also send the Zephyros to the graveyard, which is now going to be an extender for you, right? So not only are you summoning your Blackwing Dragon, you're also going to have an extender in the graveyard just through the Vada and the Harmontan, right? So that's why you want to be playing Harmontan. Then for the new card that I was talking about earlier, the Black Feather Whirlwind, this card, of course, is not as good as Black Whirlwind, but this card is really cool. It has a really cool effect where you can special summon cards. So it's kind of like an extender for you. However, the other effect that I mentioned earlier with the Black Feather Counter is that you can put a Black Feather Counter on the field with this card. And then this card can remove a single Black Feather Counter to protect a dark monster you control from being destroyed by battle or card effect. The really cool thing about this card is it doesn't say Black Wing or Black Winged. It says a dark monster, which is really nice because now you can protect cards like your Hot Red Dragon or any of your extra deck cards, essentially. It's just another form of protection for you, which is really cool. Then we're playing three Black Whirlwind. Why wouldn't you play three? This is one of the best cards in the deck. It's your searcher. It's not a once per turn. This card is insane. On top of that, you are searching it with Samoon if you don't open it, but you want to be playing three because opening it is really powerful, of course. So there's really no reason to ever play less than three Black Whirlwind. And then we're playing the one Twin Shadow. Twin Shadow is really cool because it lets you Synchro Summon essentially on your opponent's turn, and it lets you use cards in your graveyard or in your Banish Zone, which is really nice. And the card you're going to be making with this most of the time, if not always, is your Silverwind. Silverwind has a really cool effect that when it's summoned, you get to pop two cards your opponent controls. And so for that reason, Twin Shadow being a card that you can set up in your first turn combo because it's searchable makes it so that now you have a free pop two on your opponent's turn, which is really nice. And that's it for the Blackwing stuff. You really just want to compress it as much as possible to the cards that are really, really mandatory for your combo or to help you push for game. And that's why you're just playing these monsters. I think they're just the best monsters. You don't want to overwhelm your deck with a bunch of names like Shamal, for example, where they don't really do anything on their own. You really just want to play this deck where, hey, I can combo with one to two cards. For example, a Samoon is just a 1.5 card combo. You can open Vara with like another name and still combo as well. So if you have two cards in your hand, specifically two Blackwing cards that can help you combo, then the rest of your cards in your hand, you would rather than be hand traps or cards that help you combat against the meta. So with that being said, let's get into the rest of the deck. We are playing three Bestial Magnema as well as one Druid Worm. We all know how powerful these cards are in today's format, especially with the tier limit stuff. Ishuzu stuff is going to be coming out. For that reason, the Bestial stuff is very important. We're playing the four. These are just the best four to play. They also give you access to cards in your extra deck, which is really nice, like Wallow, which we'll get into when we get into the extra deck, but these are all really cool. We're playing two Cyclone. Now, why are we playing two Cosmic Cyclone in the main deck? And that's because we have no out to Mystic Mind, and there's a lot of decks that are either on Mystic Mind or they're on some kind of back row as well, and Cyclone is just kind of your main deck out to that, so I really like Cosmic Cyclone in the main deck. I know it's not something you see every day, but I actually think it's really, really powerful in this deck, especially because you have no real way of dealing with back row in this. That's why I like the two Cosmic Cyclone. We're playing, of course, the one called by the grave to protect you from hand traps. We're playing three pot of prosperity to be as consistent as possible. I know prosperity is kind of a more expensive card, even with the reprint. I know a lot of people don't have access to it. And if you don't, you guys don't have to play prosperity. I just think it does help with the consistency, which is really powerful. But if you're not playing prosperity, honestly, I would just say play more hand traps or play more cards that are really good against today's meta. But I think prosperity is really important because it does help the consistency of this deck. If you don't see Samoon, this card helps you get into Samoon, which is really powerful. And so that's why you're playing the three pros. We're playing three triple tactical talents. Now, I know this card was expensive, but it is getting reprinted in Magnificent Maven. So for that reason, it should be a little bit more accessible. But this card is just really, really good in today's format because tier limit plays a lot on your turn. Even a lot of the sprite decks now play a little bit on your turn as well. So that's why TTT, I think, is a really important card to be playing in today's format. We're playing three of it, of course. It's a card that's really good going first because if your opponent hand traps you, you can use it. But it's also a card that's really good going second as well. So that's why I like the TTT. Speaking of cards that are really good going first and second, I know it's a little bit of pricey of a card, but I do want to bring it up. It's the three cash there Fenrir. I think Fenrir is such a broken card card. This deck really, other than the Fenrir, and I guess you could say the Prosperity, is a very affordable deck. So maybe you guys can swap this out with other cards. And I actually will say you guys can swap it out with other cards. However, I think if you want to play it the most optimally, Fenrir is just so insanely broken going first and going second. So that's why I did want to play the three Fenrir. But the reason I had these as the last three slots is because I know this card is very expensive. I know it can be difficult to get your hands on these cards. So you guys can play stuff like Imperm instead. Imperm is really good going first because you can set it as another form of disruption, but it's also really good going second because it can either disrupt your opponent or if you draw as your sixth card or if you just hold it in your hand, it can be used as a board breaker as well. So if you guys wanted to play Imperm a little bit more affordable, you guys can do that. Fenrir is insanely broken though. So if you guys do have access to this, play Fenrir. And that's it for the main deck. 40 cards in the main deck, very, very consistent. And again, Prosperity just helps it be even more consistent. Moving into the extra deck now, I'm going to be a little bit quick because the extra deck is very simplistic and very straightforward. We're playing the one full armor master. This card is of course your towers of the deck. This card's insane. Not a lot of decks 
decks can actually out this card. Then we're playing the brand new Black Winged Assault Dragon. And this card makes it so that your opponent has to pay 700 every time they activate a card effect. So if they don't out this card right away, they can put themselves at very low life points. We're playing the one Silver Wind. Silver Wind, of course, is really important for your Twin Shadow combo. So that's why you're playing this. We're playing the one Nathung. Nathung is really good because it's a level six, which is also really important, which I'll get into in a little bit. But this card also gives you an extra normal summon, which is really nice. We're playing the one Black Winged Dragon. You have to be playing this for your bottle combos. Then we're playing the one Boris the Evil Wind. This card is really cool because it does help you get into your Assault Wing Dragon. So that's why we're playing the one of this. However, this card low key is cuttable. At the moment, this card is in the deck because it's a level six tuner, which is very, very relevant. So it does help you combo in that sense. Then we're playing the one Draco Berserker. It's a really good card as well. Dark level eight synchro. Again, you really want to get into your sixes, your eights and your tens. And then we're playing the one Hot Red Dragon Abyss. This is part of your combo. It's an Omni Negate for you. You have to be playing it. We're playing the one Four Strix, of course. Four Strix is very powerful. The one Wallow. Wallow is a really cool card, especially in today's format, where it's essentially just a pseudo DD Crow. So this card is really good. You can get access to this through your Bestial Monsters, but in your combo, you can actually use the Nathung as well as the Samoon on your side of the field to make this card as well. So this card is a part of your combo always. It's very, very powerful, especially if you don't open your Bestial Monsters. It does give you access to a card that helps you against the tier limit matchup. We're playing the one Evil Swarm Nightmare. This card is really good against a lot of matchups, honestly. It's also a dark, so it does synergize with the deck where you're never going to be locked out of it. For the Link Monsters, we are playing the one Wise Strix, which is really important. One IP, one Unicorn, and one Axis Code Talker. This is just an OTK package for you. This deck doesn't really struggle to OTK, but this just makes it a lot easier. And then the two cards that I want to mention are both Dark as well as Appaloosa. You guys can make room for Appaloosa and Dark if you guys want to cut the Boreas. You guys can also even just cut the Blackwing the Salt Dragon. I just really like these two cards because you're not always going to have the combo that's going to get you into the Abyss all the time, right? So for that reason, setting this board up going first into the Blackwing the Salt Dragon makes it so that your opponent really has to watch how many cards they activate before they have to out this card, right? So that's why I think these are really cool. However, Dark is a really cool option for you because again, you're only playing Dark Monsters. It can help you OTK as well going second. However, again, the deck doesn't really struggle going second OTK and that's why I'm not playing the Dark. And then same thing with Apollo. Apollo is a really cool card going first. However, the thing with Apollo is again, it's not a Dark. So there are certain combos when you're locked out and you actually can't make the Apo. There are combos where you can make it, but it's just not very consistent. I just see a lot of players like to play these two cards and that's why I'm showing them off here because they are possible to play you can play them however i just don't feel like you need them so that's it for the deck profile 40 card main deck 15 cards in the extra deck i think this deck is really really powerful especially in today's metagame again like i said it is a rogue tier deck it's not a tier one deck however this i think is a really really good way to play against the metagame and still be competitive so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that's my take on blackwing for the october slash november 2022 format by the time you guys are seeing this is actually probably november i'm filming this on halloween but anyways the point is this deck is really really powerful it's built to combat today's metagame so keep that in mind it is a rogue tier deck however it's built to combat the metagame which is really really cool i'm very excited to see blackwing get some more support i love this deck so much and i think in tomorrow's combos when you guys see how powerful this deck can be you guys are gonna really like this build i think you guys should try it out for yourselves but if you guys did enjoy this video make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one thank you guys all for watching we upload five days a week here on spanko and i've been getting so much love and support from you guys we do deck profiles combo videos dual replays and you guys seem to like all of that stuff so i appreciate every single one of you guys for staying tuned in to all of that thank you guys all for watching and with that spanko signing out peace